welcome to my channel Flores Patch. I'm Sandrine Moji and in this video I'm going to test some masking fluids. I wrote an article for Artists and Illustrators magazine about different tips to use masking fluid in the best possible way and I thought it would be fun to also do a video. Um, so the magazine arranged for manufacturers and suppliers to send me 10 different brands of masking fluid and I have been testing them live on camera. Alright, we're ready to go. I did the same drawing of flowers, one for each of the brands, so everything's lined up to go. I've got my different brands of masking fluid. And I've got a um, range of tools as well. So I've got an old brush. It's really advisable to use a very old brush for this because although I actually have a masking fluid remover to test, I've never tried it, so we'll know by the end of the video if it works or not. But I still wouldn't use one of my best brushes to deal with masking fluid. And then I've got a couple of color shapers. They're like brushes, but they're rubber tipped. And especially this one I've used before for masking fluid. Toothpicks are quite useful as well. So I'm going to use all of these and then I'm going to let the masking fluid dry. <clears throat> then I'm going to do a wash, wet in wet washes all over them. Then leave that to dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll be ready to remove the masking fluid and see what it looks like underneath. I am left-handed so I'm going to start on the right and the first one I'm going to try is this one which is Pebeo Drawing Gum, Gum Adissimi. So it comes in this little pack like this with the instructions on the back and it has an applicator on it. So I've got my applicator here, it's quite a thick one. So I'm going to use some of the toothpicks as well. I've got a piece of card here so I can push to get it flowing. And now it's going. I'm going to start with a big blob in the middle. I'm going to use the same method for all of them. Now normally you don't have to squeeze with masking fluid, just the capillarity is enough. To make it flow. So I'm doing some stamen. It feels like there is not much going on it. I don't know. Maybe I'll push to get a bigger blob. And then with a toothpick I'll just do a couple of very fine lines. Dragging it. And we won't know until we remove all the paint if that's worked or not. There's a couple of bubbles there, I'm going to bust them. Because I don't know what they would do. Come on. Actually quite hard to get rid of. I'll leave them on and see what happens. As it's part of it. Right, that's it for the PBO drawing gum. So the second one I've got Daily Rani watercolor mediums. It's art masking fluid. It's one of these bottles that you have to push really hard on it in order to open it, in order to unscrew it. I'm not very good with these bottles. And the first thing I notice when I open this, it, it smells really strong. Very fishy smell. It's not very nice. Okay, so. Bubble again. Gonna get in there. Oh wow, that's really liquid. So you've got to make sure you're in the right place. And it's not coloured this one, it's white. The first one was blue, this one is white. So one blob like this is enough and then I'm going to use the colour shaper to drag it. Because it's white, it's a little bit harder to see what you're doing. And 
then I'm going to use a toothpick to do some finer lines and see how that works. Now this one is going to take really long to dry because it's very liquid and I've got a big blob in there. There we go, so this one is De La Rani Art Masking Fluid Gomme Reserve. The third one I'm going to try is Jackson's Masking Fluid. So again it's a white one, just a little tub of it. Actually, a really cute little top that one. I quite like it, and it's quite. It's very liquid as well. It's very. Oh gosh, it smells strong as well. Right, so I've cleaned my brush, and again, big big blob in the center. The consistency is very similar to the Pebeo drawing gum. And I'm going to use again the color shaper to drag some across the petals where the paint is going to be. And then the toothpick. Because it's quite fluid, very liquid, it's not that easy to drag. I don't know how strong that line is going to be when I put the paint on it. We'll see. There we go. So, this one was Jackson's own brand masking fluid in his cute little pot. The fourth one is Jackson's again, own brand masking fluid, but this time it's a blue one. So it's a lovely sort of aqua blue, pale greyish turquoise colour. I suppose it's not its attraction, but it really is a beautiful colour. Again, smells very fishy and it's extremely liquid. You can see it's just dropping. Bing. So big blob in big blob in there and then dragging some it's a lot easier to use coloured masking fluid. You can see what you're doing and I find when you see what you're doing when you paint, that's always an advantage. And then toothpick, again quite hard to drag because it's so liquid. If I go across, it's drying very quickly, so if I go across one line I've already done with the colour shaper, it seems it's peeling off already. So I think you'd have to work really quickly with that one. Yeah, it's drying already, wow. If you're in a hurry, that's the one to go for, I think. Right, so this one was... Jackson's own brand, own brand um, blue masking fluid in that lovely aqua pale blue. Our next one is Winsor Newton Art Masking Fluid. 
It's a sort of yellowish color. You can see the color is deposited at the bottom. And um, this is a bit tricky because you're really not supposed to shake masking fluid. You can stir it gently, but you're not supposed to. And again, it's one of these bottles where you have to push hard to get it off, but it's not quite as difficult as the Daily Rally one. So I'm going to go in with my brush. If you, if you shake my skin fluid, it makes bubbles, but also it starts to kind of coagulate and make lots of lumps. I'm just going to stir it slightly. See if I, you see there's already a lump in it because it's arrived by post. And I think it's been a bit shaken in transport. Ah, it's going to be a massive stamen here. It's very, very liquid. Because there's all these little lumps in it, it's not that easy to deal with. Okay, I'm going to try and push that back in and see if it's actually possible. Big stamen. Oh, this one sprays, spreads really easily. I'm going to make two stamen here so that big blob will be forgiven. And then with a toothpick to make thinner lines. Although it's very liquid, it actually goes, it goes easily. It drags across quite well. Okay, it's a slightly pale yellow, it's a little bit easier to see than the clear ones, but not as easy as the first one, which was the Pebeo blue one. So that was Winsor Newton Art Masking Fluid. The next one is Schmincke, and it's a drawing gum, like Pebeo, they call it drawing gum rather than masking fluid. Um, it's in a little jar. It's very blue that one. It's very sky blue. So very easy to see. Lovely. It's not as fluid as Dale Rani or Jackson's. So it stays a bit more where you put it and you can really really see where you're applying it which is really nice it's fluid enough not to clog but it's thick enough that you can drag it quite easily. It's drying very quickly though. I don't have much time to work on this, I don't think. I can actually drag lines across it with my toothpick which is really interesting you can see there that I've done a line across it and it's lifted it so I might actually be able to go in between the stamen yeah that's fun to make them go closer to the center that's interesting so that was a very blue, very bright and cheerful Schmincke Ammonia Free Drawing Gum. One. This is Masker Pen and this is actually the one I've used um, when, when the manufacturers sent me all of these to test for the magazine. The first one to arrive was the Masker Pen and I was working on a Hellebore at the time. So it's actually the one I used for the Hellebore. I'm showing as an example. 
and it's um, it's got a, a fine applicator here, but you can buy different sizes applicators for it. This is the 0 0.8 that comes with it, and it's got this little piece of metal that goes in, and then. You can press a little bit to start with, but then after that, you're not supposed to press. Again, it's like a capillarity thing. And um, you just drag it across, and that's enough to make the masking fluid come out. Again, it's a lovely pale blue. It's good to use, it's quite pleasant to use. But I think it would definitely be worth it getting um, a finer nib for it, for little stamens like this. The nib is a little bit too thick. But it's easy to use, doesn't smell too bad. And I quite like the blueness of it. I definitely think it's a lot easier to work with blue than clear. So that was the Masker Pen original 0.8mm nylon nib with applicator. The next one I'm going to try is the Daniel Smith Artist Masking Fluid and this one is quite interesting because it's got a bottle with a nib on it, an applicator, which I need to snip a bit more. Okay, but then there's also in the packet there's also all these little nibs, and you can they all they all the same size, but you can cut them at different levels. And if you cut it just here, it's very fine. If you cut it further down, it's actually thicker. So you've got all these little nibs that you put on top to regulate the flow of your masking fluid. This nib I haven't cut at all, so it's very fine, and the masking fluid itself is very, very liquid. It's also very bubbly, so I can't really see what I'm doing very well. Gosh, a lot of bubbles there. I've squished some of the bubble on a sheet next to it, but every time I stop pressing, some air goes through, and then I get more bubbles. Even with the finest nib, it's actually quite hard to regulate. Not sure what that's going to look like when <laughs> when I remove it. It's a bit of a mess. Every time, every time I squeeze, I get that massive bubble. So okay. So squeeze on here, and then I can go on here. But I've got. I mustn't stop squeezing ever. So I cannot let any air in at all. The other thing is when when I stop I get this massive blob here. That's gonna get that's gonna take ages to dry. I'm taking a bit off because I'm gonna be here for three weeks otherwise. This is the Daniel Smith Artist Masking Fluid. Our next one is a brand I haven't heard of before called I Love Art and this is a masking fluid. It says draw and gum at the top, masking fluid at the bottom. And it's a coloured one, it's blue. It's not ammonia free so it smells it smells quite strong. It's um medium consistency, it's some um, not as liquid as 
some I've tried and it's less solid than the Schminke for example. Oh you can actually, hang on, I'm going to try. It's really, it's really easy to see when you, when it's that blue. I quite like that because I can really see where I've done a mark and where I haven't. So consistency wise, it's halfway between the most liquid ones and Schminke, which was the thickest one. And it seems to dry really quickly as well. I've just left it a few seconds and already it's peeling off if I go over it. And the last one I'm trying is the Molotto Graph-X Art Masking Fluid. And it's a pump marker. So it works just like a marker. You pump it a few times to get some of the fluid going. And then you just draw like a felt tip really. It's very coloured so you know exactly where you've where you've done already. And um, the only thing is because because it's a marker and it's a it's a felt tip, it's quite thick. You can't do the marks as fine as you would with a more liquid masking fluid and with a fine nib or with a fine tool. But having said that, it looks like the mark is quite sharp. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen when I remove that after I've painted. I suspect that it's going to be some very neat lines under there. Right, we're ready to start our watercolour washes. Give me a little brush. And it's all ready. So you can see that all the masking fluids are dry now. And um, you can see, you can really see the difference in colors now. Even the clear ones have gone a bit yellow. The blue ones are even brighter than when I used them. Um, the pale blue from Jackson has gone the other way. It's a little bit less colored than when I put it on. But they're quite shiny, so it's easy to see where they are anyway. So I've selected two different pigments to do the washes wet in wet. One is French Ultramarine, which is granulating and non-staining. And one is a Quinacridone Magenta, which is staining and smooth. And also it's um, a pigment that travels quite far when you put it in the washes. So between the properties of these two, we should have a good... Um, a good idea of the resistance of the masking fluid. Okay, let's start over there. I'm going to do them in a single wash with heavy paint. So you can see what I what I mean when I say it's a traveling pigment. It's really amazing the way that it just moves around and goes really far in the water. So that might go underneath if I have one type of masking fluid that isn't resistant that will seep in underneath the gum. This is the pebble one I'm painting here. And this pigment is not granulating got a bit of texture because my paper has a bit of texture. I was thinking if I'm going to test these masking fluids, I might as well give them as difficult a job as possible. And it's a lot harder for them to be smooth on a paper that has texture than it would be on a hot press. So I've gone for a little bit of texture. It's a cold press. Okay, so I've covered, I've covered the whole area completely and now I'm going to go in with the granulating pigment just around here. Now you see that on this one, because it was the Pebeo drawing gum, if you remember when I applied it, I felt it was very, very thin. 
and it's completely disappeared under the paint. So I don't know what's going to happen when that dries and I try to remove it. It's going to be interesting. Now I'm not going to paint every single flower like this in real time because I don't think much is going to happen regarding the masking fluid while I do this. The next interesting bit is when I remove it and we see the results. So I'm just going to fast forward some of this. I did two of the Molotov one because I'm having doubts as how I'm going to remove this. It's so fine and it's gone so deep into the texture of the paper that I'm kind of thinking it's going to be hard to rub off. So I did two of them to try different ways of rubbing off once I've painted. This is the moment of truth. I'm ready to remove the masking fluid for my little flowers. So let's start with Pebeo. So the way to remove masking fluid is by rubbing your finger on it gently. This is why you kind of need to have strong paper to do this because if you have a weak paper and by weak paper I mean probably less than 300 grams then there is a risk that you will take some of the paper with it. Another way is to use a rubber and that works as well if you rub against the masking fluid. You can do this instead of using your finger. It's a bit more gentle and I did notice when I was using the Pebeo one that it's very very thin so it sinks in the paper quite a bit and it's harder to remove than some other ones and I believe you know as I touch the paper afterwards I think it has damaged the paper a little bit I think some of the paper is peeling off and we're talking here of a 630 gram paper it is a very strong very resilient paper but you can see here, well, I don't know how well you can see that, but it has been damaged a little bit. It's made it's fluffed up a little. Apart from that, the fine lines have lifted really well. And the thick ones as well. And the paint hasn't gone through at all. Now, Dailerani. Dailerani is thicker than Pebeo drawing gum, so it's actually easier to remove with your fingers. The paper hasn't been damaged at all. The thick lines have worked well. The fine lines are a little bit thicker than the fine lines over here. But all together quite neat and crisp. Now Jackson's. Jackson's is somewhere between the two really. It's quite liquid but not as liquid as Pebeo. So it removes quite easily. You can even peel it off quite nicely. The paper is a little bit ruffled here. The thick lines have worked, have worked very well. The thin lines, some have and some haven't. I think it was because it was transparent, it was a little bit hard to see. So it made it a bit difficult to draw thin lines on it. Now this is Jackson again, but this time the blue one. It's a little bit easier to see than the clear one. The thin lines are not quite as neat. Some of them have got two lines for it but actually I really like the effect of that because it looks like you can see the background between in between the stamens so for stamens that has worked out really well. For other things it might be that you want the area completely covered so these little fine lines might be a problem but for stamens that's really nice. Windsor Newton nice and thick so it shouldn't be a problem to remove it. It rolls in one piece. Paper is not damaged at all. 
The thick lines have worked quite well. The fine, not so much. Even the fine lines are quite thick on this one. But really nice crisp edges. And um, no damage to the paper at all. Schmincke. Again, this one was the thickest of them all, so it removes well. It doesn't peel off too well, but it rubs nicely. And the paper isn't damaged at all. Got nice thick lines. The thin lines are not so fine, but what I did like about it is that I was able to go back in and lift some so that I could bring the colour right into the center and that was that was something I quite liked about this to be able to lift it so easily while it was on. Now mask a pen that was quite thick and it comes with an applicator as well. It lifts quite easily thanks to the thickness. The paper isn't damaged at all. The thick lines have worked well. The fine ones have worked well as well. I've got some really fine ones here. And um, it's nice and crisp. I did have some trouble controlling towards the end. You can see some of these I've got. A bit, the, the ends are not quite as neat as some of the others. Um, I would probably have to go back with some dark colour just to neaten that up a little bit. But apart from that, I quite, this one was really easy to apply. It's dried, so Daniel Smith is this one. Just rolling under my finger. That's coming off easily. No problem there to remove it. Um, some of them, some of the lines are a bit scruffy and you can see that it was hard for me to do what I was doing with it because of all the bubbles there. Because there's not there's not that much definition compared to some of the other ones. Now the I Love Art drawing gum. Again rolling it under my fingers, that's coming off very easily. And the lines are much neater. The blobs not as neat but the lines are very neat and the paint has gone really in between very well. So you've got sharp angles there. Now the next one, I did two of them because as I did it, if you remember, it was with the, the felt tip art masking fluid. And it was just so fine that it was very controllable, which was great. But I just did not know how that was going to remove because that was going right in the favour of the paper. So I did two of them and I have already started removing on here and I've just been rubbing really really hard for a few minutes and eventually it's coming off but it's taking the paint with it so that one although I can see that underneath it all the lines are very neat because it was completely controlled but the paint's coming off so I would have to go in with paint again in between all this which which kind of defeats the object really so that one didn't work out so there's one last thing for me to test and that is the masking fluid remover and with that one i have left masking fluid on the brush for a couple of weeks so it's completely hard it's just nothing nothing i can do with it so we're going to see how it goes, if it dissolves it, even after all this time. And if I can recover my brush. Okay, so I've left that for about half an hour. Soaking nicely. And oh, look at that. that. That's the masking fluid bit. And it's just peeling off the brush. Amazing, it does work. So the brush is all flexible and soft again and same thing for this really, for them 
she skims right off. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use my breast brush, you know, for masking fluid anyway. But normally, that would have been a lost cause. That brush, it wouldn't have been possible to recover it. So that's quite nice. And also, the other thing is, which is very pleasant, especially after all the stinky ammonia masking fluid. This smells of citrus. It smells really, really nice. So. There we go. Zest it, masking fluid remover. That works. Okay, so this is the result of our masking fluid test. I will take a photo of that to keep as a still on the video so you can pause on it and see all the titles. And so you can zoom in as well to see for yourself how you think it looks and which ones do you think are best. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found one of the masking fluids that will do what you want to do with it. Please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on Flora's Patch for my next video. Happy painting! Bye!